Good job. Hey, Max. Okay. Yes, good job. Next day. Yes, good job. Next day. Yes, good job. Next day. All done. Good boy. Next day. Yes, good boy. All done. Sit. Yes, stay. Yes, good boy. Hold it. We're going to show you how Max does for his off-leash hikes. Ready, Max? Let's go. Good boy. So I usually start out with a high rate of reinforcement and reward them every time they check in. And as it gets success, I can start to reward less and less. So you want to kind of find that sweet spot of rewarding just enough so that they check in uh, and keep playing your game. But don't reward so much that they never leave your side. So we still want them to go off and explore, but we also want them to check in here and there. Good boy, Max. Now, as I'm fading the tree, I want you to think about making sure that you at least acknowledge the check-in, so don't start to ignore him when he checks in. Um, that would be the equivalent of me telling you to walk away when he's jumping or walking away when he's demand barking. We ignore behaviors we don't like because we want them to learn that it doesn't get them anything. Um, and they give up on it because they learn it doesn't work, right? But if he starts checking in and I start ignoring it because I don't want to give a treat every time, he might stop offering it because it's not getting anything at all. Good boy, Max. Good boy. Go play. So at least give it affection and praise when he uh, checks in. So right now I'm mostly just using Max's kibble and I've got some chopped up uh, from Crunchios and some liver bites and a little bit of freeze dried chicken. Because we've worked out here lots and it's really easy for Max to make the choice to work with me, I don't have to use a lot of high value stuff, but I do like to have a mix of it so that if he does a really good recall, I can jackpot him with something high value. Now, if we were to go somewhere new with a lot of more exciting distractions, I would want to make sure I've got a lot more higher value stuff so that it's uh, more worth it for him to make the choice to work with me and choose me over the environment. So it really depends what your competing reinforcers are. Um, 
what mix of treats you're gonna to wanna to bring out. Good boy, Max. You wanna make sure that um, your best treat trumps anything else in the environment and that it's worth it to work for you. Good job, Max. Good boy. Make sure that anytime you go somewhere new where you think he might hesitate to choose you over the environment, have a long line on him to prevent failure. So the idea with having them drag a long line is so that you can back up your recalls or back up um, your leave-its until he's choosing you over the environment all the time. Out here, because I know he's working for me reliably, I'm comfortable not using a long line on him. But if I were to go somewhere new where I think he might fail, I would make sure I've got that line on him, A, for safety, and B, while I build up this reinforcement history that all the best stuff comes from me until he's choosing me over the environment all the time. I've hidden on Max, we're gonna try recall. Max, come! Yes, good boy, good job. Well done, go play. So something else to think about is it's not just about food, it's also about having lots of fun out here. Um, playing hide and seek is a great way for your dog to learn that you're a really fun part of the environment. So the idea is you want him to think that it's really fun to come out and play with you and you do that by playing games. Um, after he does do that recall, I give him a good value treat and then send him to go play. So sending them to go play is a really important part of that recall because very often people make the mistake of only using recall before they leave somewhere. So think about you go to the park, you leash up your dog and you leave. Um, if you call them to come before you leash them up and you leave, they start to clue in that recall is going to end the fun and then they're going to start to resist that. So the best way to avoid having that happen is you can do your recall and leash them up and then send them to go play for another minute or two then just pick up and leash, the leash and go. Um, along the same lines, don't use recall to get them to do something they're unsure about. Um, don't use recall and then put them in the bath or use recall and do their nails. Anytime that recall ends in something that they don't like, you're making a negative association and they're going to hesitate to do it. So you want to make sure that recall always ends in something great, um, have a party, give lots of really good high value stuff, and then send them to go play. The last thing I want to demonstrate is the this way cue. I'm going to wait till he heads up ahead change directions. Max, this way. Good boy. So this way just signals the direction change. It means we're going to have fun in a different direction. Um, realistically, you don't have to give a food reward every time you use that cue because you're just telling them we're going to have fun in another direction and having fun in that other direction is the reward. Um, but if he stops on a dime and checks in the way he did for me just there, I do like to give a food reward to encourage more of the same. Max goes out to you.